Hello and welcome, my dear students, to my channel Mathematics Made Easy. This is Ms. Ruchika welcoming you for the Maths Revision for Grade 10 Elite. Today I have for you another video which talks about your exam coverage, EOT Term 1 Learning Objective 5. Very, very important video because in this session we will be working at long word problems. I would urge you to watch the video till the end. It's going to be a little long video and it has taken me a lot of effort to explain the questions here. So I would have a humble request from all of you to subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon so that you don't miss this video and do share this video with all of your grade 10 students uh, from other schools also so that they also benefit for the coming math exam. So on that note, let's start the video. So in this video on learning objective 5 where you need to complete the squares in a quadratic function to interpret key features of this graph, we will be solving question 50, 51, 61 and 62. So here you see question 50 and 51. Both are going to be solved using the same method. In this video, I will be solving for you question 50 and I would want you to try question 51 yourself in a very similar manner. Also, uh, watch the video till the end because in the end, I will give you the answer key for all these four questions. So let's start with question 50 in the next slide. Okay, so let's start with question 50 and try to understand what the question is asking. So I will read for you. It's a word problem. Very, very important. Please understand how we do it. And it has a long question. It is three parts. So you should show your working for each part very clearly. So the height of a firework at an amusement park celebration can be modeled by a quadratic function. Suppose the firework is launched by a platform two feet off the ground and a velocity of 96 feet per second. Use HT. So this formula is given to you. We are going to use this formula for solving the question in part A. And you're also given the value of the variable G. So first step in a word problem is to highlight the important information. So let's answer A part. We need to write the function to represent this situation. Now in the question, the function is already given. Let's write the function. One more time. I'm just copying it from the question itself. This is given. Now in this uh, expression, in this function for H, T, there are different variables. G, T, V, H naught. Now out of these, what all are given? Let's write. So I'm given the value of G. So I will use, I will substitute gt as 32 feet over second square. This is the unit. Also, you are given the height here. So here the value of h naught will be 2 feet that you will put. And also you are given the velocity. So velocity is the value of variable v. So this is given to be 96 feet per second. So we are going to put these three values in this equation and substitute and solve using calculator. So let's plug in. So this is 32 t square we don't know. V is 96 and H naught is 2. So simplify, use your calculator, cancel the common terms and this is the function you will get. So this completes the first part of the question where you have to write the function for HT, simplify it and substitute the values. Let's do part B and C in the next slide. So from the first question, we got the value. This is already done from answer of A part. I will just write first the function and then at part B, which is this part, we will convert it into vertex form. For doing that conversion, we will use the completing the square method. So I want you to pay attention very carefully how I'm doing this. So first I write from part A, uh, the equation of the function ht. So this is what we get. Now let's see how we convert this by grouping and by factoring. So here we first take these two brackets, these two terms, combine them and take the negative sign outside. So I can take negative 16 outside. So what is left inside? t square minus 60. Okay. And plus 2. Is this fine? Now you see here square identity. So we need to complete the square. So first we, what did we do? We grouped the first two terms. We took the common factor out and wrote it in this form. Now at this part of the inequality I need to use completing the square method. So let's do it. So for that what I'm going to do minus 16 as it is. Now this is a square minus 2ab term. 
so I need to add 9 to it so that this becomes a perfect square. See in the next step what it will become. It will become t minus 3 square. Now I cannot just randomly add this plus 9. To balance it out I also have to subtract minus 9. So what will be the term? Plus 2 was there and this minus 16 with minus 9 would be the extra term added. So what is left? Just simplify this. This is 16 multiplied with 9 plus 2 and on your calculator this will come out to be 146. So that's this number and therefore now in part B of the question we have converted the function ht from what was given in part A this one to this form and this is the vertex form. And which method did we use? We used completing the square method to write it in this form. So that completes part B. Let's proceed to part C in the next slide. Okay, so now to answer part C, we need to find here the axis of symmetry and the vertex and interpret their meaning in the context of the situation. So in order to answer C part, we will use the answer we got from B part. So I will rewrite HT is equal to minus 16 times T minus 3 whole square plus 146. So this was your uh, function ht in the vertex form. So from here we are getting the answer for t part. So, that's, so remember the axis of symmetry comes from the square term. So what is inside the square? Let's see. Axis of symmetry is given by this term which is um, inside the square so it is given by t minus 3 just put it equal to 0 so t equal to 3 this is the equation of axis of symmetry that completes one part now it is also asking you for the vertex and uh, for the vertex because the axis of symmetry divides the function into two equal parts the fireworks will be at the same height after it in after five seconds okay so i will write here now just what i told so axis of symmetry divides the function into two equal halves Okay, so because this is happening, the firework will be at the same height uh, after 5 seconds. Okay, so after 5 seconds. So that completes our question 50. In a similar way, I would want you to try question 51. Just follow the same method that we used for this question. And now I will provide you in the next slide the answer key for both the questions. So on this slide, I provide you the answer key for question 50 and 51. Check your answer and make sure you get the correct one. Let me know in the comment section if you have any doubts and queries. Let's proceed further in this video and complete our learning objective 5. So now we are moving on to question 61 and 62. Again, these are very similar to each other. So in this video, I will be solving for you question 61 and then providing you similarly the answer key for question 62 so this is what we do and this is what you do okay so let's start question 61 and let's read it first what it is asking and then um, get the steps in the next slide so a rock falls from the top of a cliff that is 25.8 meters high so this height is already given to you so you can use your h naught as 25.8 meter just highlight the important information this is a very easy question because the formula is already given to you in the question the value of g is given to you just write the quadratic function that models the situation so we will proceed in a similar manner like we did for the previous question 50 and just substitute these values in this given equation we will get our answer for uh, the quadratic function also you need to determine to the nearest tenth of a second so you need to round off the amount of time it takes the rock to strike the ground that means the variable you need to find is the time and it is an approximate time you need to give also explain your reason so let's do this now let's solve the question together first i write the equation the function already given and then i plug in the values 
So this is the equation. Now we are going to substitute in place of H0 25.8 meters and in place of G I'm going to put 9.8 meters per second square. Also I'm going to uh, put the value of B as 0 uh, because we need to actually find the time P is going to find when uh, the rock hits the ground. So if the rock hits the ground, its velocity, final velocity will be zero. That is why we put V as zero meters per second. So let's put that. So this term will go because V is zero. So what you're left with, one by two, G is 9.8. T square, you don't know, H naught is 25.8. Now use your calculator, simplify. So this HT will come out to be equal to minus 4.9 t square plus 25.8. Now when um, the rock is striking the ground, can I say the height will become zero because it is touching the ground? So now simplify this, move it on the other side, it becomes positive. Divide both sides with 4.9. I hope you're understanding why I'm doing that. The reason is because I want to get my value of variable t. So this will come out to be Approximately, you can simplify. So we have T square is equal to 25.8. And I hope you know that the unit is going to be second square here. So T will be the square root. And now you can use the approximation. So this will approximately come out to be 2.3 seconds. So it takes 2.3 seconds for this rock from the top of the cliff. That is 25.8 meters high to strike the ground. And this slide shows you the answer key for question 61 and 62. I hope you all got the correct answers and this video was useful for all of you. With that, we have come to the end of today's session. I hope you understood learning objective 5 and you also learned how to complete the square in a quadratic function to interpret key features of its graph. If this video was useful, give it a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe to the channel. And this is Ms. Rachika signing off from today's session. Thank you for watching this video and all the very best for your coming exam. Bye-bye.